but I don't believe the Taliban are going to last long term. I don't think it's going to be ISIS-K. I think it's going to be, you know, basically the resurgence of the Northern Alliance that we're seeing now that's already been fighting uh, against the Taliban in the North. Um, you know, we trained some amazing fighters through the years, and I was with them on the battlefield. And my colleagues were, uh, your, your forces were as well. Very capable. Um, and what happened in Afghanistan in that 11 day takeover was extremely complicated. And, uh, and I think we're going to see a resurgence of anti-Taliban increasingly organizing and in becoming increasingly successful. And within five years, I think a lot sooner, the Taliban won't be owning the country. I also, I'm not sure. I mean, I know they ran the country previously, but that was a long time ago and different generations. I'm not sure they're even ready to do it right now. So that's going to be a big part of it as well. The easiest one to differentiate is ISIS-K versus the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda and the Taliban are two, um, you know, the kind of parallel groups that have been uh, bedfellows, as we know from, um, you know, from our history uh, with 9-11, where the Taliban uh, was giving Al-Qaeda safe haven in Afghanistan the ability to plan uh, attacks against the United States, which kicked off 9-11 and the 20-year war in Afghanistan, what we call the forever war. You know, ISIS-K is, a, strangely enough to say, an even more um, uh, radicalized group as far as their ideology. ISIS-K is the enemy of uh, the majority of the other terrorist groups out there um, that we call our enemies. And it's the reason is that unless every other group adheres to their strict version of Sharia law, to their version of the caliphate that they want to establish um, across the Middle East, be it initially in Syria and Iraq, and then in Afghanistan and Pakistan for ISIS-K, um, any group that opposes that is their mortal enemy. In fact, ISIS-K started fighting the Taliban on the ground, um, you know, starting in 2015, 2016 in Afghanistan. We have seen reports that the Taliban had already been all through last year, um, been maintaining relations with Al Qaeda. Uh, but uh, we don't know how verified those are. We'll have to see how that pans out. Now with ISIS-K, if there's anything good out of this whole uh, development is we know ISIS-K and the Taliban completely hate each other. They've, they have been battling um, for years. ISIS-K fluctuates. They're, they're very strong in how they coordinate, how they recruit, and how they organize and equip how they train the forces under them. I mean, it, I have uh, conducted campaigns against ISIS in Iraq, uh, Syria, and Afghanistan, um, hunting them from the air, uh, having our US and partner forces uh, hit them on the ground. And I'll tell you in every location, even though it's you know different nationalities, it's ethnicities that all identify under ISIS-K, they all uh, share one thing in common they're very well organized, equipped, and trained. I mean, in 2017, we had a huge operation uh, called Operation Hamza going on for months. In fact, that's where the, the, the famed Moab strike happened um, against ISIS-K. Uh, and, uh, you know, those, those guys were using old talc mines, going in and out of the talc mines, coming up, shooting at our guys at the Afghan forces, going back down to some of the best guerrilla tactics you've ever seen, really. And um, we've seen that common throughout, we'll say all three theaters, uh, Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan, where we're fighting them the heaviest. Their military prowess is, uh, is obvious, but their influence throughout the country um, is far above that of ISIS-K, as we can see. They, they took over um, so many of these military units strictly through their influence, as well as uh, the lead politicians within the country.
And in fact, if they hadn't done that and hadn't, hadn't had that ability, um, Afghan forces would still be fighting them. They would not have taken over the country. 